hello there and welcome back to this next episode on F1 2020 my team career mode with a little Minardi team hoping to push on from the early success we've had in season two with regular point finishes we're at round five of 16 at the circuit de Catalunya in Barcelona for the Spanish Grand Prix another circuit that I, uh, I'm very fond of so the workstation then let's have a look at the weather forecast overcast sunny overcast all that jazz have a look at the messages then for the weather forecast yeah uh, overcast with a bit of sun and qualifying same for the race so again no real sign of rain rivalry then coming into this episode two weekends remaining uh, and it includes points from both qualifying and a race session just one behind Gasly so a lot closer than I would have expected our driver details as you can see there as well so the R&D tree then, we know that we've done no upgrades, well I should say we've done no upgrades at the end of the last race because it was literally just a week away. We are awaiting the two major upgrades from the aerodynamic department, uh, the tertiary wing flaps and also the rear wing upper flap. They should be on the car hopefully in the next week. As for progress history of other teams, nothing from Red Bull, Mercedes or Ferrari. Looks like Alfa Tauri have had a little upgrade to catch themselves up to Renault, nothing from McLaren Racing Point, little upgrade from Alfa Romeo and the same for both Haas and Williams. So there's a bit of a gap between ourselves and Alfa Romeo, a bigger gap between ourselves and Williams Haas are now right with us. As for our units then, I see, uh, oh sorry, I say units number two, I'll be using qualifying in the race, all within the uh, high teens, mid twenties, that sort of thing, but you'd be using units number one in the free practice session so 31 percent for the ICA, 28 for the mg uk 31 for the mg uh then it's 26 36 and 24 the lap difference between them is around about 40 laps so probably by the end of the next episode these two will be e even and if it would be a case of splitting our time between units number one and two and then moving on to units number three for qualifying and the race. As for the gearbox, practice gearbox still 16%, so I'll probably order a new one at the end of this episode. Like I said, once it gets to 20%, we chuck it out and get a new one in. Event gearbox, so coming into the fifth of six weekends, 25% where nothing to worry about. Weekend tire allocation, as usual, go for soft, the softest available to us. So we've got two sets of mediums that we can use, four sets of soft tires in the other practice sessions and then the standings you can see there were ninth in the championship on 12 points 13 points for the team because Nick De Vries has his first point season results you can see there looking at us a 10th an 8th a 7th and a 10th and the trophies there as well as you can see so we'll go away to FP1 which is going to be in slightly overcast conditions we'll put some laps on the board get some practice programs done work out a setup as well and I'll give you an update once that session ends so here we are then at the end of FP1. Did quite a few laps, got a load of practice programs done as well. Bottas was the fastest on the medium tyres, 17.2. Let me scroll down. So Norris up into P4 as well. I think we were 15th in the end. We were indeed. Quickest time on the medium tyres was set, I think, on our second lap of the race strategy programme, where you've got to complete five laps. You can see there we're less than a tenth away from uh, Stroll in 13th, so solidly already into the midfield. A few drivers behind us in the hard tyres could probably go quicker. Ricardo in 16th being one of them, possibly Nick De Vries as well, who's half a second slower than us. But uh, we've got good pace here, happy with the setup as well, very nice and balanced, not getting a lot of oversteer and understeer. Uh, maybe it will start to creep in once the tyre wear rates go up. Tyre pressure as well, I think I did a little bit of work at um, as well. The left sides are going up a little bit too high uh, compared to the right. It's being a clockwise circuit, it's going to happen. Turn 3 and turn 9, the long fast right-handers is what's really killing it. So I've got to work a little bit on that. Um, we have just two practice programmes remaining. The track acclimatisation and the qualifying programme. All the other four the tyre management, fuel management, ERS and race strategy we completed in FP1 all in purple as well. So I'll uh, only run in either FP2 or FP3. To be honest, I think I'll skip FP2 and do it in FP3 because uh, that way we'll be able to really work out what our pace is compared to everyone else. So I'll talk to you at the end of FP3 and let you know how that session has gone. So we skipped FP2. And here we are at the final classification for FP3. You can see we're in P4 of a 17.465, just uh, half a second away from Hamilton. That was, of course, achieved on our qualifying pace program, which we managed to do purple at the first time of our screen. Only green on the track acclimatisation. So I think we ended up with something like 480 resource points 
uh, for the free practice session, which is a nice healthy amount anyway, so I'm fine with it. Um, a few people out there in the hard tyres, including Vettel, Albon, Kvyat as well. Uh, where's Nick DeVries? He was on the mediums as well, so uh, a bit unsure about what his overall pace is, but I reckon he'll be around where uh, Magnussen and Grosjean are coming into qualifying. As for us, I'm confident that we can uh, get inside the, um, I don't know, sort of the uh, 13th to 16th place bracket, which we've sort of been flirting with uh, throughout this season so far. Confident as well that if we can nail the strategy right, then we might be able to keep our point streak going. We've scored points in all first four or races of this season. Hoping to make it 5-4-5. Four, five. Uh, as for the soft tyres, uh, they're not really that durable around here. So uh, if we do somehow qualify, well, I assume we'll be qualifying outside of the top 10. You never know. It'll probably be mediums and hards. Of course, the safety car could change things up. But as the practice sessions have gone, uh, it's, it's been okay. It's been good, to be honest with you. Uh, we've dialed in the setup now. The um, tyre pressures I've dropped right down to the minimum on the left hand side and they're still a little bit too high compared to the right hand side and I think we're just going to have to live with it because of the nature of the circuit and the track layout but uh, yeah still very very well uh, done in FP3 and we can advance now into qualifying so the resource points 593 and 200 from Nick DeVries almost 800 there 2252 very nice healthy amount for some more upgrades 26 percent for me 20 22 actually from nick devries he's now a claim level 11 48 combined for the team ideally i'd want to be uh, probably uh, level 15 by the end of the season for myself and the team hopefully level 20. Uh, all we can do is just keep doing our job and this will slowly continue to rise so we're back in the workstation then before qualifying you can see it's going to be a bit overcast same for the race as well but the weather forecast hasn't changed too much it's going to be fully dry for both sessions so as before we now make the change from units number one onto units number two and probably in a couple of races time i reckon probably in a mid-season point of the season actually mid-season point of the season mid point of the season these two units will be uh pretty much even and probably well within the 50 percent range so i might be uh bold and cunning halfway through the season and order a load of new units to get uh, units number threes and fours ready for everything else for the second half of the season. As for the gearbox, uh, we're now onto the event gearbox. Practice gearbox 18%. So I'll give it one more, uh, one more weekend before we order a new one. Event gearbox 26%. Now coming into the fifth of six race weekend. So everything is looking good. We'll advance into qualifying and hopefully secure a decent spot on the grid. So at the beginning of the qualifying session, we've got an oil leak uh, with the car. So it's going to be about two minutes before we uh, manage to get back out on circuit. So uh, might as well show you the weather anyway. Short qualifying is going to be dry. Same for the race as well. Four sets of soft tyres going into this. I uh, can't remember if I actually showed you the car setup or not. So I'll just show you that. Drain the fuel let aero. We're running 6.7. Transmission 55.60. Suspension geometry to the right and to the left for camber and toes as normal. Suspension 5, 3, 6, 5, 4, 5. Brakes 154. Tire pressures all the way out for the left uh, side of the front and the rear as well. One click down for the right hand side. Hasn't really changed uh, too much uh, with the tire wear. But still a little bit high on the left hand side. And as I said before, that's generally down to turn 3 and turn 9. Uh, where uh, obviously the tire pushes get a lot of load on that side. Uh, so a few cars are out on circuit. I'll be back with you guys in a couple of minutes uh, once this uh, system fault has been rectified. So in just over 15 and a half minutes left of the session, we're only going to really have time now to do two runs. Um, it's going to be so, so tight to squeeze in a third. You can see some drivers there already in sector one, sector two. We'll wait and see what Leclerc does because that will give us a, uh, a good um, scope really to where we're going to be. I don't think anyone else is uh, has completed sector two yet. Leclerc is the only one. So where is he on the circuit at the moment? He's just coming down into the final chicane. Uh, we'll try and jump on board with Leclerc if we can. So here he is then. Nick De Vries is out, just coming out of the pits now. Leclerc comes across the line and it's going to be a low 16, 116.0. Five, four, okay. So that's the target lap time. Part thermal regulations now into effect, and we can drive out of the garage. 
So yeah, lost uh, a few minutes there at the beginning of a session, which means that we can only now really realistically do two runs. I don't want to squeeze in a third, to be honest with you. We possibly could, but I want to give myself a bit of time to actually see what's going on. And now on to the circuit then. Two DRS zones here, main straight and the ones between turns nine and turns 10. Both of them provide a good opportunity to overtake. Grosjean has already set his lap time, currently sitting in P4. So we'll try and uh, have a bit of a slow outlap at least. Try and save the tyre as best we can. They do burn up quite a bit round here. Hopefully we can uh, have a good first lap. It was scrappy. Really scrappy. I'll be amazed if it's competitive. Well, it kind of is. P12. We'll allow Albon for it. I don't really want him profiting off of our uh, slipstream. We had a Grosjean Russell behind Raikkonen, but it, it, it wasn't a nice lap, to be honest with you. I, yeah, I really need to tidy up. Yeah, that's enough fuel to get back to the pits. So uh, we'll have a slow tour back, see what it is compared to everyone else and the midway point of the session, but we can definitely improve. That was uh, a very messy lap, really. So just over nine minutes left of the session. You can see that our best lap time is good enough for P18. So it wasn't as bad as what I thought, but we were the best part of four attempts off of Nick De Vries. We lost three attempts to him in sector one uh, and also attempts to him in sector two. It, it, it was a scrappy lap, to be honest with you. I'm confident that we can definitely challenge Magnussen for P15. And basically the last eight cars, as it has been for the last couple of races, both the Haas, uh, Alfa Romeo, Minardi's and Williams. There is a bit of a gap to the rest of the uh, strong midfield where I'd like to be. But uh, we'll probably go out of about two and a half, maybe three minutes left of the session and try to uh, yeah, dial out those mistakes and put in a better lap. In the speed trap. So let's move to the side. We'll allow uh, the second Haas car through of Magnussen. We'll turn everything up. We'll have a bit of a gap to him if we can make it. We've got plenty of time to get across the line. Right. Let's dial out those mistakes and get that P15. A better lap, a lot better. We should be comfortably P15. Let's have a look. Is it P15 at least? Ah, oh, it's 18th, 16th, 16th. It's being updated. Okay. So Bottas takes pole four tenths ahead of Verstappen, Hamilton, Vettel, Albon, Leclerc complete the top six, and it's Science, Ricardo, Ocon, and Norris for both the McLaren and Renault guys inside the top 10. It's Perez, Kvyat, Gasly, Nick De Vries up into 14th place, just ahead of Stroll, and us 16th place. Ah, oh, if we improved by half a tenth, half a tenth, we'd have had P14. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, the lap felt okay. I think I lost a little bit of time in a couple of corners, but certainly a lot better than what we did in our first attempt. Uh, just clear of Magnussen, about a tenth ahead of Raikkonen, and then Grosjean, Giovinazzi, Russell and Atifi were a few tenths away. So it's 16th and 14th for Minardi at Spain, solidly within the midfield, just hanging off the back of the midfield really, another two or three tenths, and we'll be mixing with these guys out here just outside the top ten. But for qualifying at least, P16 on the grid is good. 
we can definitely do a bit of work from here. So the rifle broke down with Gasly, we lose out to him unfortunately, but still uh, pretty close with him. 18 to 16 now, a good race. Uh, we'll see us hopefully jump up ahead of him. The team acclaim 26% for me, 22 for Nick DeVries, 48 combined then from the team. So back at the workstation then before we go to the track. Uh, messenger Jeff pre race. Hey Alex, how are you feeling? Yeah, okay, I'm fine. Um, I think we can do a bit of work here in the midfield. Probably, I don't think I'll start on the softs. Oh, I don't know. Maybe softs, hards is a strategy. We'll, we'll have to work it out once we get to the grid, really. If softs onto hards is a viable strategy, then that's what we might do as well. Of course, being Spain, probably going to be a safety car once there's a retirement as well. Um, nothing else really to look at. We're on the uh, best units that we can run at the moment. Gearbox, fine, not worried about that at all. So yeah, really, pretty much, just go to the track. We'll have a look at the introduction, the grid formation, see if anyone has any penalties, and then have a little look at the race strategy. Welcome along then to what promises to be another fascinating Spanish Grand Prix. A race which saw Max Verstappen win on his first ever appearance with the Red Bull team in 2016. This after the dramatic coming together of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg on the first lap. Will we see more moments for the scrapbook here today? The circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia, a track that will certainly force the drivers to push themselves. It consists of a very impressive main straight going into turn one. It's a straight that also offers a DRS zone, so it's likely to be a hot spot for overtakes. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Vettel, Alexander Albon, and Leclerc, Sainz, Ricardo, Ocon, and Lando Norris, Perez, Fiat, Pierre Gasly, and De Vries, Stroll, Lee, Kevin Magnussen, and Kimi Raikkonen, Grosjean, Giovinazzi, Russell, and Nicholas Latifi. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. So we remain in P16. Race strategy, mediums onto hards. Looks like that, I uh, can't really tell what everyone else is doing behind us. Um, yeah, I don't think softs, softs onto hards is going to be a viable strategy. We'll start with one lap's worth of extra fuel at least. Um, mediums onto hards, yeah, I mean, we could start on the hards maybe, and that will give us some better options going forward. But I think we should just uh, run it as it is. Uh, the guys inside the top 10 might be looking like they're locked into soft, mediums and hards uh, because obviously they'll be starting on the soft tyres. So uh, we could do the same as them, but I don't really see the point. So uh, yeah, we'll stick with the medium and the hards. Uh, one lap worth of extra fuel, I'm fine with that. So we'll start the formation lap. Looks like everyone around us is on the mediums at least, so that's good. Including De Vries. Slow pull away. Right, let's get the car up to temperature on this lap. We're learning the gears, so go through them all if you can. So then back to Spain, where we had, I believe, our best result of the season in season one of a fifth place, aided massively by the safety cars that came out. Uh, I mean, we've got pace really to be up ahead of De Vries in P14. We've sort of fluffed up there towards the end of qualifying. But we're comfortably inside the midfield again. We're clear with most of the guys behind us. So it's going to be a case of trying to uh, gain a couple of positions in the early laps if we can. And then sort of uh, settle into a rhythm. And see what uh, the strategy does, how the race develops as well. Be nice if we could score points here. I usually run quite well at Spain. We're four races into this uh, second season now, and we score points in all four. There will be a race at some point where we won't score, but be nice to keep that uh, going for now anyway. Oh, let's not go on the gravel, Alex. That would be a silly thing to do. So, yeah, I think this is going to be. We're going to have to be slightly cautious. 
I think, the first few laps. No one's really out of position, so I think it's going to be a lot of following the car in front. Good start. Keeping it clean is obviously crucial. And if there is a safety car out there, as and when it will develop. Most of the top ten, I believe, will be on a two-stop strategy. Everyone else outside of it will be on the one. So it could come down to pure pace to beat the guys around us because we're all starting on the medium tyres, it seems. So let's uh, hope that we get a, a clean start, a good launch on the inside. But of course, it doesn't really matter once we get out to turn one. It's a long main straight here. And it does bottle up a little bit going through turns one, two. And then opens up again going through turn three. Let's go. Okay, lights coming on now. Round five at Spain. Ah, uh, not a good start. I'm trying to hang it to the inside though, stay there. I've got Magnussen just beside me. I'm gonna go side by side to turn three. A love tap. Hopefully, I didn't pick up any damage from that. We didn't. Okay, we've reclaimed P16. Don't hit our teammate. Car doesn't feel too bad, to be honest, in traffic with high fuel. Oh, really shouldn't have gone on the uh, overtake button there. Let's let one completed, though. I've got a stroll behind me. Too cautious into turn one there on the inside. So back down to where we started. So uh, nothing lost, nothing gained. We'll try to settle into a bit of a rhythm now. So into lap three. As Jeff is saying, DRS is now being enabled. Two DRS zones here, main straight and the straight between turn nine and turn ten. Both of them provide Decent overtaking opportunities, but you sort of have to be quite close to the car in front of you on the exit of both of the previous corners to make it stick. We're doing okay, sort of, at the moment, running around in P16. Stroll and debris aren't exactly disappearing. And we're well within inside the DRS uh, second for Stroll. We're sort of just starting to drop the Haas cars behind, which is to be expected. So uh, we're comfortable here on the back of the midfield. See if we can close up a little bit more to straw. Wow, that was just a nightmare that, but we managed to get DRS at least. Don't really know where we're better at the moment in various sectors. So we're about just trying to keep it as smooth as possible, really. So coming through the final corner now to complete lap six. Personal best from us, 1 minute 20.495. Uh, we're at the back of this midfield consisting of us, Stroll, DeVries, both of the Toro Rossos and then a couple of other cars up front as well. You can see even on the left hand side was three and a half seconds clear of Magnussen, just over four seconds clear of Grosjean and then both the Alfa Romeos and Williams are behind. So we've dropped the back six which is to be expected on some circuits like this and we're just hanging on. We're not really hanging on, we're not like overdriving the car really. I'm sort of trying to keep it as smooth as possible. Um, but we're, we really need to be making a bit of progress here to be honest with you in the next few laps if we want any chance of points here. But at the moment we're sort of just hanging on in P16, just following the wheel tracks and getting the DRS every time from Stroll. Still a long way to go though. Okay, coming across the line now at start lap 7, we've jumped all the way up to P12. The guys that started inside the top 10 on the soft tyres are now coming into the pit, so they are, I think, 
26, 27 laps on a set of hard tyres is going to be a real ask for those guys. So I think they're going to be doing soft, medium, hard or soft, medium, medium. So uh, the guys that started the uh, race outside the top 10, including us, we're now be going quite long into this race to try to make our one-stop one strategy work. Verstappen's come out 2.8 seconds, 2.7 seconds behind. Still pulling away about half a second a lap from the uh, cars at the back of the field at least, so they're not really a worry to us. Hopefully we don't lose too much time once the quicker guys start to catch back up to us after their first stop. So into lap 8. Pretty much the entire top 10 have now made their first stop. So we're up into 7th place. Verstappen is now less than a second behind. And although technically we are now fighting for position because we both need to make one more stop. I'm not really going to be holding up these quicker guys. My battle is with Stroll, our teammate, the Alpha Towers. To try and sneak a point if we can. So we're coming into lap 10 now. Jeff has just told me that uh, tyre life is starting to go off. But I don't need to be made aware of that. I can feel it starting to go in the rears. Still keeping pace with the cars in front of us. With the DRS. Still got Verstappen behind us. He'll be absolutely fuming at that. Because Bottas is now 3.1 behind him. And a couple of laps ago it was about 5.5 seconds. So uh that's how good our pace is at the moment. We're able to keep the quicker guys behind us. And our pit stop is uh, starting to loom up now. The next couple of laps, I reckon. Okay, battery's looking good. You... Into lap 12. And credit where credit's due. Well, Bottas is now with Verstappen. Neither of these guys are really putting me under any sort of pressure. And uh, us guys here, Stroll, De Vries and the Alpha Towers and Perez up front as well, are really setting some really quick lap times here on these huge medium tyres. I think we might have the uh, beating of some of these guys in a two-stop strategy uh, once this race sort of does develop out a little bit more. But we're doing okay here. Push now. We're boxing this lap. Here we go then. So the pit window is now open. Nick De Vries is ahead of us. So it might very well come down to if he pits, we stay out, and vice versa. Well, we'll uh, if he stays out, I think, we'll probably pit. Doesn't look like much has gone on, to be honest, and to be honest, it hasn't. But um, I'm actually really enjoying this race. You know, the midfield pace here for the one-stoppers, including me, is being pretty heavy. And uh, the Haas cars, as you can see on the track map, they're a long way back. They've got all the other quicker guys behind them as well. So this is a strategy that could... Uh, benefit us in the long run. There's a possibility here for a point or two. Ideally, we need to get past Stroll and De Vries. But look, Verstappen and Bottas are still behind us. Have been for several laps. They can't find a way past. So, see what Nick De Vries does. Right, Nick De Vries carries on, we're in. Cool, now we'll make the change onto the hard tyres. There's quite a few other people in, Perez, Gasly and Verstappen is in for his second stop as well. This will be everyone onto the hard tyres. We will join towards the back. But uh, hopefully uh, we've got some pace over some of the cars around us. 2.4 seconds stop. And we're coming up behind the McLarens and a Renault of Ocon as well. And they've still got to stop again. So uh, this is not a bad position to be in. Now we've got to see if we can get the jump over both Stroll and De Vries. If we can, that puts us in an even better position. So this is going to have to be a really aggressive outlap. So there's a yellow flag out there. It's Norris who is blowing up. Nick De Vries, I think, has come out in front of us. Yeah, there's Stroll as well. Nick De Vries and Stroll. So they have managed to stay ahead of us. I don't know if that will bring out a safety car or not for uh, Lando Norris. But we're now in P14. Okay, the safety car is out. And it the is a safety is car. It is a safety car. Okay, let's... Slightly bad news to be honest with us. That's because we've got guys ahead of us, like Ocon and Science, and a few others that still need to pit. Um, and we would have been essentially a pit stop ahead of them, look, because we're right with them. 
That's how much, that's how relentless the pace was in the early laps there. Uh, they can now pit underneath the safety car and we join at the back of the train. Probably even just behind us actually. So uh, this has gone against us unfortunately. Nothing we can do. So now we're going to catch up to the safety car. The order is a little bit upside down. Uh, Ocon didn't pit. Science did. A few others pitted as well. I'm not too sure what tyres they've gone on. We're now into P8. And this is uh, going to be a legit P8. Nick De Vries, meanwhile, is up to P5. Uh, and so we both completed our one and only stops, really. And the hard tyres felt okay when uh, we did them a couple of laps there. So now it's a case of saving the fuel, saving the ERS. And uh, seeing what happens. Ocon is out of position. He still needs to stop. So, in theory, we are P7. Okay, so the safety car is staying out for another lap. To give you a rundown, having looked at the race director, Perez leads the race. He doesn't need to stop again. Bottas is the first of the front runners. He's up into P2. He doesn't need to stop again. Then after that, it's both the Alpha Tyres in third and fourth. De Vries is fifth. Stroll is sixth. Ocon in seventh, out of position. He does need to stop again. So once he does pit, we will be in net P7. And behind us is a whole host of very quick drivers uh, for Stappen, Hamilton. I think Leclerc and Albon's in that as well. All the way down to about P13 where you'll find the Haas cars in 13th and 14th. And it's Vettel back there as well. And then we've got the Alfa Romeos and the Williams cars towards the back of the field. So we will be in net P7. Ideally, I want to try and get past Ocon as soon as possible. And then try and uh, be a bit defensive for the last 15 or so laps. We'll have plenty of fuel, plenty of ERS and these hard tyres... As you can see, are still relatively fresh. No damage on the car either. So I think ideally we have to kind of stick to the uh, DRS and the slipstream that we was getting uh, originally before this. Because obviously we had Verstappen and Bottas behind us for several laps, putting us under no pressure whatsoever. So essentially this will be a part two. We need to stay with the guys in front of us to stop the guys behind getting past. But uh, we're looking good here. But maybe some more points. So here we go then. Racing point are looking at some good points. Alpha Tauri as well. Same for us. Nick De Vries is up into P5. Really could have done without the safety car, to be honest. We'd have been in a slightly better position. Keeping for Stappen and Hamilton behind us. It's going to be crucial down into turn one. Oh, it's cold tyres. I'm using a load of ERS down the main straight. So we kept the stepping behind us. We need to catch back up now to the guys in front. Desperate for that slipstream in DRS. DRS is now enabled. Here we go. DRS is now enabled. This is crucial. We're just inside the second to Ocon. My worry is, though, is when he does pit, which is probably going to be in a few laps, we'll be out of DRS range. So we really need to put a bit of pressure on here. Keeping Verstappen and Hamilton behind quite nicely, though. So Ocon pits. We do get the DRS, though. Now we're desperate to close that gap back up to Stroll and Devries ahead. We need to be within a second if we've got any chance of holding on to this position. We just did it. We just did it. Three temps as well up on our previous best. We really did push there on that lap. De Vries then has lost touch with the cars in front of him. So Stroll's putting him under a bit of pressure. DRS is so crucial around If you get DRS, you're not getting overtaken. Into lap 25 then. Using Rich Mix and the EOS down the straights. Stappen and Hamilton aren't really putting us under threat. And De Vries is doing a stellar job holding on to that P5. Still quite a few laps left to go here, but uh, this is looking not too bad, to be honest. Meanwhile, at the front, Perez still leads. Bottas right on his ass. So into lap 28 then. 
Uh, absolutely nothing has changed, apart from the fact that Bottas has now managed to get past Perez. But De Vries is doing a great job, really, holding on to P5. Uh, for a, a couple of laps ago, we fell outside the DRS, so I pushed a little bit on the ERS in the fuel to get back up there. And again, which is cruising around in P7 here. Not once has Verstappen put me under any sort of pressure. And uh, this, is, this is how close it is, really. Um, you look at the development, all the teams are very close together, apart from the guys at the back. But, you know, we're very well with inside the midfield and not too far behind the top three. And that's what's basically being shown here. However, DRS and uh, Slipstream has definitely helped us. But uh, as long as nothing goes wrong here, we're on for our best team result of our career. Coming into lap 31 now, free to go. De Vries is starting to struggle a little bit. Here he comes, he's coming under pressure from Stroll. Who locks up the left front. De Vries falls down into P6. Now, I've got to play a team game here. I reckon I can easily get past De Vries. But, if I pass him... And go off the stroll, De Vries, I think, will absolutely tumble down the order. So I'm going to play the team game here. Because we're in such a good position. I mean, if we were fighting over ninth or something like that, or even for the last point, I probably wouldn't bother. Uh, but because we're P6 and P7, I'm going to try, for the last couple of laps here, to hold De Vries, or to hold these guys back and let De Vries keep that P6. Okay, half around lap 32, coming into the DRS zone. Basically, it's a case of push it in sector 1 and sector 2. And then in sector 3, where there's no opportunity for them to overtake, just hold back a little bit. You know, just uh, go a little bit slower here and there. So we don't get the DRS off the of debris. So we then actually just hammer our rich fuel mix and ERS down the main straight. Which is looking good then. Definitely could have caught and passed debris while well, he was up behind him anyway. But, uh, oh, that was a bit of a mistake there into the chicane, but it doesn't matter because we can just do this. And look at that. So into the final lap now. You're not catching, boys. Don't even bother. So I think we can push now for this final lap. We might catch back up to De Vries, but it won't matter too much coming out the final corner because this is the final lap. Hamilton's managed to get past Verstappen and all that. And uh, well, Bottas is massively clear in front. Perez is P2. The Alpha Towers, I'm not too sure what order they're in, but they're third and fourth. Stroll P5. And Minardi's of De Vries and me are sixth and seventh. So this is a real backward sort of uh, finishing order. It's going to be real good points for us. Shame that racing point and AlphaTauri are going to score well. But I mean, the likes of. Uh, well, McLaren won't. Or will Renault. Down to the uh, last real overtaking opportunity for these guys to get past. And it's not going to happen now. Bottas wins at a canter. And we've allowed De Vries to stay ahead. What a great race this was. This was very tactical, this. It was all about the slipstream, all about the DRS. And it's P6 for Minardi, P7 as well. Yeah, such a good race there, um, I thought. The second half after the safety car sort of mimicked the first half, really. Where, as long as you stay within DRS and slipstream, when the cars behind can't really overtake, the Mercedes uh, engine in the back of the Minardi certainly helped as well. If we was with the Renault like we were last season, I think we'd have been in a bit of trouble. But to be honest, we never ever came under threat from Hamilton, Verstappen, Leclerc, all that lot, uh, before the safety car, even after the safety car. Bottas caught and passed Perez after it to uh, win uh, quite comfortably by nine seconds. You can see there, the guys are starting 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, all in the uh, six of the top 10 positions. And uh, that was basically down to um, 
Well, the top 10, if you remember, that started in the soft tyres uh, inside the top 10. They were pitted before the safety car, but some of them got held up by slower traffic. And there wasn't really a lot of overtakes going on back there. I was sort of glancing at the, uh, the track map that I have to see where they were. And they weren't making up a massive amount of time. And we saw that before the safety car, Verstappen and Bottas were behind us for several laps. And we came under no threat whatsoever. So Spain is one of those circuits where it is quite difficult to overtake if everyone's sort of similar pace, which we were. You can see there the best lap times there. Yeah, OK, Bottas was obviously quite clearer, uh, quicker than us. We did a 19.9, .9, um, which was the same as the Haas guys. Uh, but the guys, you know, Mercedes Red Bulls behind us are only about four or five seconds, uh, four or five tenths quicker, not seconds quicker. Um, and it's just one of those races where the safety car, I, uh, I think it helped us a bit, to be honest with you. But we were behind the McLarens and the Renaults anyway, and they had to make a second pit stop. They did under the safety car, still couldn't cut their way through the field. So, uh, yeah, very, very good. So Bottas wins. Good points for Perez. Second place for him. Kvyat was the lead Alfa Tauri driver just ahead of Gasly. So good points for Alfa Tauri. Good points for Racing Point. You're strolling to fifth. Good points for us with sixth and seventh. That's Nick De Vries's best result of his career so far. Hamilton, Verstappen and Leclerc complete the top ten. Very upside down. Outside of it, Albon, Ricardo, down in 12th. Magnussen and Grosjean, 13th and 14th. Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Vettel, 4th on the grid, finished 17th. Sainz, down in 18th. Ocon, in 19th, pitting after the safety car. But they all managed to beat both of the Williams guys. Nando Norris was the only retirement. So... In the standings, this will be a bit backwards, I can expect. Bottas takes the lead of a championship, 20 points ahead of Vettel. Verstappen in third, Hamilton in fourth. Perez now up into fifth. Stroll remains in sixth. Leclerc down into seventh. Kvyat in eighth. We remain in ninth place. Gasly moves up a couple of positions. Nick De Vries moves up a shitload of positions as well into 13th. Still quite a few drivers yet to score. Surprisingly, one of them is Esteban Ocon. So in the constructors, Mercedes have a 38-point lead over Ferrari. Racing point jump ahead of Red Bull. Alfa Tauri jump ahead of us, but we jump ahead of Renault in return. So we remain in sixth place. Dif uh, disappointing that Alfa Tauri had such a good race because we would have been ahead of them in the top five. Uh, Renault obviously failed to score. Same for McLaren. Alfa Romeo on six. Haas and Williams still yet to score. So the rivalry breakdown. Gasly unfortunately did beat us. Um, it would be nice if it was the other way around. So it's 18 to 22 now. Just a couple of races remaining. In fact, just one weekend remaining. Team Acclaim, 26 for me, 22 for Nick DeVries, 48 combined for the team. So we all remain the same Acclaim. Continue to push away. And finally, the cash. We completed all three of our secondary sponsors. So a nice little boost there as well. Damage deductions for both of us, unfortunately. But still, a uh, good little bit of profit there. Just over a million dollars. So back at the headquarters, we've got a few weeks before the Azerbaijan Grand Prix because obviously Monaco has been cancelled. Uh, so Zaynetto, uh, the new sponsor or managed sponsor. We'll have a look and see what Zaynetto was like. So we've got to uh, sort. Uh, oh no, hold on. Uh, sort, sort. Where have we got to go to? Sponsor name, that's it. So Zaynetto... Uh, was giving us a gold bonus of 319, a weekly income of 213, answer at least two interview questions during a race weekend. Oh, we'll, we'll resign. We'll resign with Zaynetto. I'm fine with that. Um, TriStar that gives us nearly $700,000 with uh, every passing week. So, uh, we've got the rear wing upper flap and the tertiary wing flaps hopefully coming in in the next few days. And then nothing before uh, Azerbaijan, apart from obviously the weekly uh, resources and running cost activities. We might as well get some of these on the go. Let's have a look, see what we can do. Race simulation. So second driver for Nick DeVries, experience and awareness goes up by two. That's quite good. Driver promotion filming. Might as well get our claim up a little bit. Durability team building. Sponsor advertisement for the vehicle. Uh, that's a four-day event. Uh, brings 750 acclaim for the team and generates quite a nice bit of cash as well. Uh, sponsor event promotion. More acclaim. 5k loss in cash that's fine we can afford it and we've also got a durability equipment upgrade and durability team building so uh equipment upgrade might as well do that 10 percent for the durability department and 60 extra resource points and the durability team building uh, another 10 percent 
and it's going to cost us five thousand uh, dollars might as well get them all done to be honest with you as for facilities we know the durability department's at spec two we know the personnel department's at spec two we've got 15.54 million dollars so we could probably get another department up and running we might as well do some work on the chassis department or oh, marketing how much is marketing going to be 20 million oh my god chassis department uh, 5 10 15 million so it leaves us with just half a million uh, and we know that we've got three races to get some money back up to potentially uh, re-sign Nick DeVries who is now worth six million um, so I might leave it I might leave it until we have just over 20 million uh, because there's gonna be I think uh, three races left to go we should be able to generate some money in that time to get up to six million but uh, I don't want to go a bit too mad if that makes sense so uh, right we'll advance time but uh, we'll see what these two upgrades do on the 14th okay one of them has failed one of them has passed yep okay that's fine so we'll go to R&D we'll have a look at the performance we'll come down to the aerodynamic department so then the tertiary wing flaps have passed unfortunately the rear wing upper flap has failed we can get that redone and it'll arrive well before Azerbaijan that's good uh, at the same time as well we've got a minor upgrade here that we could potentially do the front wing cascade so that'll be the 28th of May um, potentially do that as well actually 675 we have but the durability department uh, morale was quite nice at the moment um, which is going to cost to get the electronics done 1750 that's quite a lot of money isn't it quite a lot of money we've got three major upgrades over here a major and a minor over here but we might as well have a look at this minor upgrade as well then front wing cascades so a more refined profile to the upper winglets of the front wing cascades increases downforce hopefully that will pass at the first time of asking about seven or eight days before the azerbaijan grand prix okay right so then back to the overview we'll advance time again job promotion and filming comes in for me weekly resources and the running costs sponsor advertisement for the vehicle improves our acclaim quite nicely Sponsor event promotion, durability equipment upgrade has come in, that's good. Rear wing upper flap has been redone, durability team building, front wing cascades has passed first time of asking, which is good. Weekly resources, running costs back in, and now we're ready for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So quite a lot has happened there. Yep, yeah, that's okay. We have no activities at the moment. So up to $19.6 million. Team Acclaim is now up to 17 with the activities that we managed to do. So definitely can do one of these three departments probably after this race. We'll definitely have enough money now, I think, to get Nick DeVries re-signed. So the performance, I'll have a look at the performance comparison at the beginning of the next episode. But the redo of the rear wing upper flap has now come in. And at the first time of asking, the front wing cascades come in as well. So you can see there, at least in the aerodynamic department, we're now the third worst, um, or eighth best, if you want to call it that way, powertrain does need a little bit of work we've got some major upgrades over there to do we can probably get two of them on the go after the azerbaijan grand prix but uh, we're working away quite nicely on the powertrain department and also all the durability and two of the powertrain generic upgrades have now come onto the car so we can look at our units now this is all fine of course i'll make the change over before fp1 uh, nothing to look at here here or here uh, as for corporate side of things sponsorship yeah that's fine uh one more race with satellite we might keep them going again complete a total of 100 laps during the race weekend because the weekly in goal bonus is quite high as for contracts you can see where nick de is now up to an 84 his experience has gone up to uh, 12 racecraft 10 awareness 12 pace 10 that's since the beginning of this season obviously it goes back to zero if you like at the end of the season but nick de is uh, now still worth six million his contract expires in a few races time but uh, he's an 84 rated driver which is uh, really quite nice actually obviously his uh, acclaim is still quite low but uh, his experience we're getting it up there I mean if we have a look at his awareness stat uh, it's 84 so it's better than quite a few of these guys uh, let's try and find the first one that we can find that he's actually better than him well Gasly's got an 88, 86, 81 for Perez so his awareness stat for Nick DeVries is really really quite good to be honest and his overall stats also quite nice a level 84 
Uh, yeah, so we'll continue to work away at him and uh, see how things go. As for finances, everything is looking quite happy. Finance history, making a lot of money at the moment. And as for standings as well, we're now ninth in the championship. Nick DeVries up to 13th. Minardi sitting in sixth place. Five races done, five in the points. Baku next is going to be a little difficult. So we'll end the episode there. The allocation, obviously, is the one that we'll go for. And uh, overall, yeah, we've got a lot of work done on the car, upgrade-wise. Improved Nick DeVries as well quite nicely. Generated a load of money. Hopefully get another facility done in the next episode or two. Team Acclaim now at 17. Resource points over 2,000. Hopefully be about 3,000 by the time this weekend is done. And uh, yeah, and very, very strong race at Spain. Uh, DRS and Slipstream counted a lot. The safety car helped us a little bit, but not as much as it used to do. And we came away with the best team result that we've had of our career so far. Next one is Baku. I'm expected to struggle there. So a lot of time will be spent on track in the practice sessions. But for Spain anyway, really thoroughly enjoyable episode. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all for the next one very soon.